models by Mark Manson. Non-neediness. Neediness is described as an unattractive character trait. When you need something from somebody, we are going to make non-neediness a bit simpler. To translate this whole attraction and trying to get women into your bed on the side. Let's think of sales. When you are interested to buy something, let's say a laptop. Everybody is familiar with laptops, right? They have different specs, they have different sizes, power and color. When the salesman comes up to you and holds a laptop in front of your face, at first sight you like it. It looks like a laptop that you would like to have. But then the salesman starts trying to sell too hard, trying to sell it to you. Take this laptop. You should take this laptop. Don't look at other laptops. Take this one. This is the best one. You better take it now. Calm down. What would you like the salesman to do? Actually, you want him to be the expert and guide you through the process to make it a great experience. You want to take the time. It's not every day that you're choosing something important, right? The salesman is finding out why you need the laptop, and what your situation is. When he finds out, he does the best he can do to provide you with the best service he can give you. So what can you learn from the salesman? He knows that he has the best laptop and he is not worried that you are going to choose for his laptops. He's relaxed, he's almost laid back and he's trying to understand you. This is what women want as well. The power of vulnerability. Vulnerability is often seen as weak. This part of the book is putting your character on the table, being emotionally naked by telling you like somebody and asking her on a date. Being vulnerable is powerful when you have the feeling that it is accepted by the other person. When this is not the case, you will get it back in your face. But there's a balance in this part of vulnerability where you make a conscious decision of who you want to be vulnerable to and by who you don't want to do that. Why? Being vulnerable means that people can hurt your feelings and therefore make you feel bad, like heartbroken, disappointment and rejection. The opposite is never being vulnerable, that you will never connect with somebody. You will be alone and have shallow relationships with people who are also acting in this way. So why should I be vulnerable to the people who I like and trust? The answer here is love, where you tell people what you really want out of them emotionally, sexually and out of life. The moment somebody accepts this part of you, then you are able to build a long-term relationship with a person that will hold forever if you do so. The gift of truth, the friend zone. We all know these guys, they are around beautiful women for years and he is a straight guy. It's too obvious he likes her. He gets jealous when the woman talks to other guys and when she dates another guy, she will come to him and tell him that he was such a dick. He thinks she deserves better, she deserves somebody that is nice to her. I'm right here, can't you see it? Believe me, she knows. Just because he never made his intentions clear, she sees him as weak. He never even tried in her eyes. If you are such a guy, make a fucking move on her. You might get rejected. Good, then this won't hurt you anymore by looking how she's dating other guys and then let you know about it. You don't want that. Make a move, move on and find a girl, make a move on her and try your luck there. Then you will find out the truth, which is if she also likes you. Polarization, which means basically creating tension. Don't do this with everybody. It's super annoying if you are a guy and you are also doing this to other guys. Now you might wonder, what does this mean? It is always disagreeing with people and making people doubt of their beliefs. This form of communication has its pros and cons. When you're hitting on a girl, it can create tension, which results in sexual escalation. 
which is a pro, but for some of the overcompensation people out there, they do it all the time, even to old people or other guys. It results in disrespect. And on the work floor, you will have a lot of trouble because your manager will tell you that you have a problem with authority. Understand what you're doing here. Create tension with girls who you want to seduce, not people who you want as a friend or as an ally. Rejection and success. Rejection is a good thing. You will learn from it and it's a mirror that you have to work harder. Don't think rejection just counts on women. Think of an interview when you didn't get the job. How was your communication verbally and non-verbally? Women are also mirrors for men. You will learn a lot about yourself if you find out why women reject you. And don't ask them. They won't tell you. Most girls are too sweet and too nice to tell you that you have to work on yourself and get your ass to the gym and create a life where she wants to join you on your adventures. If you don't know what the problem is and why you consistently get rejected by women, seek out for help. Go to somebody who knows how to fix your emotional wounds and struggles that you have and fix them. Create an amazing life that are, so others can join you. And talking about life, Mark talks about the three fundamentals. Create an attractive lifestyle. Overcome anxiety for women. Master the emotional communication verbally and non-verbally. Demographics. Demographics has to do where people are in their lives. Timing is key in dating and attraction. Here we have Katie and John. Katie is 22 and is studying. She lent money from the government and spends it on alcohol and parties. John is 32. He has a master and works as an engineer. He just came out of a relationship of seven years and he never drinks. They meet each other in a bar in Amsterdam where John goes out for the first time since his breakup. Katie is on the other hand going out for six months straight, three times a week. They start talking and they don't seem to connect with each other. Misunderstandings and humor doesn't seem to land on each side. As you obviously guessed, it didn't work out between them. Two years later, John goes to the same bar. He worked out for two years and every week he went out for the last two years. Katie finished on the other hand her study and started working. She became more serious and developed different values. They don't recognize each other and start talking again. But this time, it is different. Katie doesn't seem to be so distracted all the time. And John has way more confidence. John makes Katie laugh and is confident with his body. And he is not afraid to come close. They kiss and after that night, they started dating. Your intentions. This is so important. Why do you do what you do? The woman checks what your intentions are if you make an action let's say you give a hug why do you do that do you want to make her feel good or do you want to make a move towards sex some guys can hide this by practicing this act please don't go that road give people a good time because you are a giver and not some psychopath that tries to manipulate women with his tricks some women will fall for you because they feel insecure and are looking for some affirmation from men so they feel more pretty. Great women will look right through you and they will see that you're making up an act. How to improve flirting? Fix your life first. Nothing is more unattractive than a guy who doesn't have his shit together. Then. Have hobbies, have friends, have a career, make people laugh and show them affection. Be sure you have something to give and believe in your value as a man. Walk up to her, talk to them and see if the woman likes you. Thank you for listening. This was Rody. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.